Hello, Dr. A. Uh, this is David Van Buren, and I'm on Team G with Mike Neal, myself, Royal, and Clarence Matthews. Uh, so, here in front of you, you can see our textbook management system. Uh, as you can see, we chose to use a tabbed interface with uh, five distinct tabs uh, that each represent a class. And those classes are displayed here. And you can see some of these classes are dependent on others. Um, you can also notice that there's no ordering. Uh, the ordering was cut in the, the interest of time. So what we have are just these five. And because the ordering is not here, textbook is kind of standalone. Uh, only section book kind of depends on it. Uh, course and instructor are also standalone. They can be brought up and broken down uh, uh, as long as there's not something implementing one of them. Uh, section requires a course and instructor and section book requires a section in a textbook. It's as simple as that. Alright, now on to the unit tests. So, I actually just found out I could do this this way, which runs them all at the same time and makes life a little bit easier. So it is one, two, three, four, five. And there we go. They all pass. Happy days. Uh, the later ones actually take a little longer than the earlier ones because they have to build up and break down more because they have those other classes that have to be instantiated first so they have something they can use to instantiate themselves. Now, what we just tested were these five classes here and these five classes access these five. So, we actually just tested all ten classes, which is nice. Uh, this one doesn't have any unit tests, but this is our front end. And what we're going to do now is actually look at what, you know what, that was a tease. I'm actually going to look at this. This is our assembly project. As we mentioned, we are Team G, and that is our first initials, SD1, of course. Lots of commits. We had lots of fun. So let's move that out of the way and on to the fun stuff. All right. So now we have our five tabs. And you can see some information when we flew by there. Uh, we'll start with courses. It just has a nice little drop down, and uh, we have some aggregate information here. We have our prefix, our course number, and the actual course ID, which is unique. So, as you can see, you can have two courses with the same prefix, same number, but different course IDs. So, you may have one that has a certain number of credit hours, and another one that has a different number of credit hours, or whatnot. Um, this is just logging text back here. So, don't worry about it. You know what? I'm going to get that out of the way so that it's not distracting. Um, so you can select any one of these, and if you try and add one that's already there, of course it'll yell at you. You can't do that. If you uh, change the credit hours, it's five credit hours. Hold on. Let me turn the lock on there. Then we update it. Happy days. It's five credit hours. Which one was it? would help if I looked first, wouldn't it? There it is, five credit hours for English. It certainly feels like it sometimes. All right, now we have instructors. Somewhere I only have two in here though, and then, oh, all these are alphabetized. This one's a little more obvious, this just has two. And it just fills in the information when you select it. It's pretty much all the same, just fake information. I mean, we didn't go out of our way to make some unique individuals to input into our database. Um, sections, similar. Uh, the section number is kind of arbitrary. Of course, you know, in any sort of realized system, you would have some sort of uh, uh, schema that you would follow, and these would be more consistent, and that would be enforced more so for, through the uh, through the code and the database. But uh, in this case, we just chose to make it a string that has a maximum number of characters. So, when you select one, these will change as well. These two drop downs. These indicate the course and instructor that are part of the section. The section number you can edit, of course, and you can set start date, end date, number of students, and these are the books. This is not editable here. This is for informational purposes only when you are perusing the sections. Um, of course, if you delete the section, the books, the books themselves won't be deleted, but the entries will. So, you know, same thing. You try and add, it'll yell at you. You change the section number. Say, well, you know what? I want just like that with a different section number. There you go. But you'll notice the books disappeared. Another interesting feature here, we find one with books. There we go. 
Um, we have books here. So what if we change the section number and we go down here? Books are gone because now that section number does not have books. So it doesn't look like you're going to add something that has books that it won't when you're done. Um, now, another thing here, this particular section has this instructor. So if we try and delete him, no way, can't do that. So we'll go on over to textbooks before we look at section books. Um, similar to the other tabs, you just select a sector from the drop down, and all these are populated. This is editable here, but we also made it a drop down so that we could select by ISBN. So say you only know that ISBN. No problem. You'll notice when I select the ISBN, this changes up here as well. So you're not you don't have inconsistencies. So in here you can just set the title, author, year, edition, publisher, whether it can come with a CD and an online or an online code or both, and a brief description. So edition can be blank. We chose to allow that to be blank. You'll see it shows edition here in parentheses, and this one has nothing because it has no edition set. So um, some books have edition, some don't. So we, we again just left that as a possibility. Now, section books. Now I start to get to the important stuff. So here's your sections, which is just identical to this. You just select one, and it'll show you what books are and are not part of the section. And if you want to add one, you just select it, add it, and there it goes. It's removed from this list, add it to this list. Now that book, is it required? Is that does it require the CD? If it comes with one, that's enabled. If not, it's not. The same with online code. But it might come with a CD, but you don't really need it. So let's just do that. Okay, that's good. Now let's add this book. Now, this one can have an online code. Say we need that. And it's required. Make these students pay up. And that's it. So if we want to remove one, we can just select the book, delete it, and it's gone. So, that's pretty much it. That's our application. Um, I would have liked to, a few things that I will point out though. Is it would have been nice to take these and put it below here, have another row so you could set those when you add instead of having to add an update. Uh, that was actually my fault. That was my design decision and I thought of that after the fact. Um, and it's a bit late to change it. Also, I would take the whole thing and I would stretch it this way. Um, a couple more hundred pixels. Uh, give you some more length here. You can see this book is already pushing the boundaries here. Um, these are kind of pushing the edge, and I could include more information here if it was longer. Instead of just title, ISBN, you could put a few more things. Oh, I forgot to mention. You can see here, it requires the CD. But if it's required, now it's required. And it requires the CD. So you can kind of see without clicking on it what is and is not required. So just a nice little touch, I thought. Um, so that's our application. I'm sure there are things we could have done better. Um, I know there's things I would have done differently, but uh, it's all part of the learning process. But I think we all had a lot of fun, and uh, we all worked together, worked hard, and this is what we came up with. I hope you like it. Thank you, Dr. A. We all had fun in your class. Have a good summer.